Welcome to Ask the Experts. It's MoneyWatch.com's podcast where we take the mystery out of your finances and answer your questions. If you do have a question today, ask the experts at MoneyWatch.com. I'm Jill Schlesinger. I'm Jack Otter. And we are joined by a special <laughs> guest star, dun, 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 Dan Cadlick, Money Watch blogger, author of the world-renowned expert book on how to talk to your kids about money called Bank of Dad. That's <laughs> awesome. Is that? Have you ever gotten an intro like that? I've never got. I, I, is that me you're talking about? That is yeah. you. I just want to also say that before we went on the air, I say to Dan, hey, you know what? You're way better looking than the picture that's on the website, which I just want to put up here. Okay, now look at this guy. Sally, put up the screenshot of this, okay? Look at that guy. Look at this guy. Looks like a different person. That doesn't look like you. Now go back to him a second. Isn't he 10 times better looking than that picture? And then, by the way, when our intro came up, he started laughing at me like, oh, yeah, you got a lot to talk about with that intro. <laughs> well, thanks for coming and joining us today, Dan. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Let me give a little bit more of his bio besides being world renowned. He is an author and journalist whose work appears regularly, regularly in Time and Money Magazines on their websites. He's written three books, including the most recent, With Purpose, Going from Success to Significance in Work and Life. God, that's a high bar, man. You're not kidding. Jesus. Uh, he's, I don't know, there's like 10, there's so much stuff here. But the most important thing you should know about Dan is that he's blogging for us now. And it's so cool because his blog is called The Bank of Dad. And I think this is great. So, um, Dan, you're a perfect guy to come talk to us because, you know, we're getting geared up to send all of our kids off to college and school year is going to be starting in just a month. And so you're the man who knows how to talk to kids about money, right? Well, I like to think so. Uh, I, I got interested in the subject when I sent my daughter off to college, for, uh, the, the oldest one, for the first time, and I realized that I hadn't taught her a thing. Really? Uh, you know, she was uh, 18 years old, and I started talking to her about credit cards and budgets, and I thought, man, you know, I think I dropped the ball a little bit while you were growing up, and I'm I'm trying to correct that with uh, with, with the other two, which are still at home. <laughs> Uh, Those two poor two girls. <laughs> they're like, oh, is it boys or girls? Uh, I'm sorry. One, uh, two girls and a boy. Two girls and a boy. Um, but they're all doing great. And, you know, I, I had this talk with Lexi. It, it turned into a column for Money Magazine and uh, just got a tremendous amount of interest in it. Uh, and it ended up with me on Oprah talking about it. Hold on. Oprah? Oprah. Oh, Oprah. my God. That is so cool. <laughs> How was that? Yeah, you know, that was it was it was great. She's to be honest with you, I, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I've been on, you know, CNN and CNBC. I've never been on a daytime show like Oprah, and I, I was. And it's not just a daytime show. It's not like you're like on the Bonnie Hunt show or something. You're on with the Queen. No, Oprah. yeah, I didn't realize how big she was. I'll be honest with you, I didn't. I didn't realize it, and uh, uh, you know, but she was. She was great, and uh, uh, she made me feel comfortable. Uh, didn't didn't try to get me with any facts. I mean, she. I mean, she didn't. It wasn't gotcha. It was. It was a very professional uh, appearance, and I, I really enjoyed it. That is so cool. The, I would... the problem is we're men, and so we don't understand the power of Oprah. Well, that, you understand women that, understand Wait a it. second, but you understand how much money she makes. Yeah, that's true. That's you right. saw, but, you... I, but I think you're right. That's, it's, 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 a, it's a woman's network. Yeah. network. Yeah. It really is. And, and uh, as she was walking out, not to go on and on. Yeah, of Oprah, course. We loved it. But as she was walking out, uh, the, the studio audience were reaching out. They just wanted to touch her. She's a goddess. And, and, <laughs> and she would touch them and they oh you know, you know crazy. it's a, it, when I, I wrote a story for <laughs> o magazine like old girlfriends came out of the woodwork people I hadn't heard from from 20 years yep. they all saw this story better and, than facebook oh jack, jack is doing okay <laughs> much better than facebook yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's um talk a little bit about uh you know beyond oprah cuz she doesn't have kids so you can't even tell her what to do but i don't have kids either so this is really all for jack just make this all for Jack. With his Thanks. his two children are sitting there with old HP 12 Cs, trying to figure out <laughs> compound interest and figuring it out. So, um, gonna, we've got a bunch of questions, but um, what I really, I guess, want to know is when you, for most people, they're in your situation. They haven't really done their homework. They haven't educated their kids. How did you broach the topic? when she was, when Lexi was going off to college? How did it come up, and how did you, was it, did you get a lot of pushback from her, or was it okay? No, no pushback really at all. Uh, she was, she, she was wanting the information. Uh, we, we, I, I cut a deal with my kids where when they go to college, they, they are off my payroll. Uh, 
you know, they have to make do with the money they made over the summer. Mm -hmm. Uh, So step one was to make sure she made money over the summer. Uh, You know, and, and there were some gifts from grandma and there, you know, some savings. But what I had to explain to her, and and this is really how it started, was I I said, Lexi, we, we've got to talk now because, you know, you've got, there's no more allowance from us. You have X amount of dollars. You've got to figure out what your expenses are and how far that's going to go. If you're going to need a part-time job, if you have to work more this summer, uh, you know, all, all in, and, it, and it's a conversation. We, other than talking about budgeting for her allowance uh, some years before that, we hadn't really talked about it much. And she was, she was eager. She, she was eager to take in the information. And do you have pushback in terms of, you know, she gets the information, but it's been nice having dad and mom around, right? So how do you deal with the fact that you want to give them, you want to make sure they're secure enough so they feel like they do have a safety net if God forbid something bad happened, but empower them to take control? Is that the, the kind of the delicate balance? Well, you know, she obviously she does still have a safety net. Um, I try not to tell her that too often. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're on your own, kid. But the reality is, you know, mom and dad are paying tuition and room and board and asking her to pay for uh off-campus meals and beer is not a big commitment. Uh, however, she's paying for her clothes as well and, and you know, vacations, trips. Uh, you know, that's all coming out of her pocket. Uh, okay. uh, she, there was, there really, there was the occasional, oh, well, you're not making Kyle or Danny do that. You know, I said, well, no, but they're not in college yet. And right. So there's a little of that, but but generally she really embraced it. And that's she's, great. She's, she's looking forward to growing up. Okay, so Jax, how old are your kids? Uh, three and six. Okay. Yeah. Two, two, Good luck with that. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> what the six-year-old has two summer jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She's she's shining daddy's shoes. <laughs> um, no. So, what about for someone in Jack's case? Like you got, uh, he's got young kids. Tell us a little bit about how you start bringing money into the conversation with kids at that age. Well, I, I, three is a little young. Uh, <laughs> six, I think. You, you know, I, th- I think allowance certainly allowance by age six. Uh, and you just have to talk about what that allowance is for. Uh, you know, at six, he or she, 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 yeah. she could, she should probably start being able to make change and and, and understand uh, buying candy. Uh, that uh, you know, you're at the store with her, and 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 she said, "I want that candy bar." Well, okay, well that's what I gave you three dollars for last week. Uh, go ahead and pull sure. it out of your pocket. And uh, I know with with my kids, this happens even still. Uh, Oh, oh, Dad, I'm going to the movies. I need 20 bucks. I said, well, you get an allowance for that. I said, well, I know, but it's in the bank, and, and I have to go get it. I said, I said okay, so go get right, it. Right, right. Oh, it's a bother. <laughs> yeah, go get it. And, and Jack, are you paying uh, an allowance at this point or not? We, we just kind of started it, and quite honestly, my wife and I dropped the ball. Wow. So we need to get better about it. She, she doesn't really Don't you throw her under buy the bus. things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, my daughter, so, you know, she, she wants everything, and the very occasionally gets it, but she's just started reading books and she loves this one series of books. So I was thinking, you know, giving her some money and allowing her to make that call, wow, I could spend this money on buying a book hmm. or I could spend it on something else or save it would, would start to get her in the mode of understanding that you have to make choices in life. Well, you've got plenty of time with the, with the, with, with the age of your kids. Right. So, uh, okay. uh, I, you, def- you start small and, and it just, you just want them to make some decisions. Uh, no matter what the decision is, you know, a choice. I, you, you want them to have to make a choice. I always think it's kind of interesting, not so much with the younger kids, because I, I am a big fan of, of financial literacy, although um, Eric thinks it doesn't really work, but <laughs> I do. I think it does work. I think that the more kids understand basic concepts, the more comfortable they feel managing their own money, and they're not so wigged out at that moment where you're leaving for college. Uh, but I, I wonder, one of the things that I used to have to deal with as a financial advisor with was my clients who were sort of enabling their adult children for a long time. And then here I come in as the financial advisor saying, hey, Jack, you cannot do this anymore because actually you can't afford it. And the kids are freaking out because you're sort of changing the rules. So how do you suggest that parents start having these hard conversations, I think, when they're adult children about, like, hey, the bank of dad is closed. I'm sorry that I let it go on. Oh, I'm sorry it was open for way too long. Right. Well, I tell you, that's a tough one. I mean, it, it, ideally, you start having this conversation uh, while they're 11, 12, you know, 14, 15, 
and you start setting the groundwork that there is this end point and it's coming. And I, I know that that's one message that I was able to deliver with my kids, uh, probably not as strongly as I should have, but if it, it, the shock of, uh, yeah, it, it's not fair to just say, okay, it's all over. I mean, unless there's family hardship and, and circumstances change, that's, that's a tough one. That, that's a tough one. But I do think you have to, um, if, you haven't, if you haven't done it yet, it's, you need to. Uh, uh, you know, you, you can't let these kids uh, bankrupt you. And, and even if you have lots of money, it's just not good for them if you keep paying their way. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the best stats I saw, well, I think it was from Dave Ramsey, who said that kids who are cut off in their early 20s on average, have 20% more lifetime earnings than uh, kids who are coddled into their 30s. You're ki- that's an amazing stat. That I is, love that. That's a tremendous stat. I think it's in one of his books. I, I, I don't know where, where I saw it, but I saw it. Jack wants to fact check that right now. I can see he's about <laughs> to jump out of his skin right now. Yeah, no, I think, I th- actually, I agree completely. I think, yeah, I mean, I think it, 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 might, even, it yeah. might even be one of these made-up things, but the point is it's a good point. All right, so I mean, I, it, it I still have... leaves people who happen to have a lot of money with questions of, well, how do I get it to the kids? You know, the Buffett quote about give them enough to do anything but not enough to do nothing. Um, but that's probably a topic for a different day. Yes, I love that problem. What should I do with yeah. all of my money? <laughs> um I wish I had that problem. Okay, here's a a question that we have from Bill who wants to know, how do I convince my 23-year-old son that he should start saving for retirement and not on beer? Uh, He has an entry-level job, so he clearly doesn't make a lot, but he doesn't have any student loan or credit card debt. I think he can afford to participate in his 401K or a Roth IRA. He doesn't agree because at 23, he has so much wisdom. Jack, (laughs) what do you say about that? Well, it is a tough one because a 23-year-old just doesn't have that sense of mortality that he can't, he can't imagine ever being hurt, having to replace his hip and not being able to work. <laughs> he's full of energy, uh, so he thinks he's going to work till the day he dies. Um, so it's, it's a tough one. If he is susceptible to mathematical arguments, uh, everyone <laughs> has seen these incredible, everyone in our business has seen these, these charts that show the value of compounding if you start saving early. Well, we have a chart. I have one of these charts here that Great. is from... Uh, that really, I mean, look, I don't need to, like, here's the chart. It's really cute and everything, but it just says that the sooner you start, the better off you will be. Right. Duh. Uh, v- uh, Vanguard was kind enough to run some numbers for me. Uh, we have Make Believe Sally and Make Believe Bob. Uh, Sally starts saving at 25. Good girl. Yeah. Only saves for 10 years. $100 a month for 10 years. That turns into, and then at 35, she stops. She buys beer from then on. Excellent. And she has $157,000 at the end of that. Bob, meanwhile, doesn't start saving until 35. He saves for 30 years, not 10, but 30, and he's only got $130,000 uh, when he retires at 65, and that's the power Lesson? Of so, uh, lesson, start early. Um, and, of course, there's the old free money argument. Um, so, uh, I think he just has to show his son those numbers, and um, let's hope it know, sticks. A- another way, uh, this is something I just saw recently as well, is if you want to keep it really simple, uh, the money you save in your 20s is worth 14 or 15 times more than the money you save in your 50s. Wow. Well, that's great. That's awesome. Powerful. I like that. Um, now, did you guys see this article in the New York Times? Um, let me pop this up here. Um, and, and this was about the case for paying kindergarten teachers <laughs> more because this is the New York Times yesterday, and it basically was an interesting survey that kind of followed people kids along through their lives and and it found out that that actually those who were well educated early on had greater success later in life so i guess we should pay our kindergarten teachers three hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year because dan in your school district i understand uh, that that's would, somewhere that, close to that number that, that right would, now that, that would be a pay cut mm-hmm. in my district oh yeah poor things <laughs> i was glad to hear that this was in your paper as well because I thought maybe it was just a plan in mind uh-huh. to try to justify the tuition I'm paying in private school that, for that, my kids at that age. See that? But it made me feel good. I, what I found fascinating was they don't see any difference in the high school years with these children. This is like an interesting thing because I once had a client who uh, I said, look, you have X amount of dollars to put towards your education, to your kid's education. You want to choose to spend it any way you can, but I'm just telling you this is the number because it's just not – you guys can't make your retirement without doing the, this. And – He said, okay, that I am sending my kids to private school from, I think it was basically kindergarten through eighth grade, 
and then that's it. And then they went to public high school and public college. And it's most people, I think, would do the opposite, right? right. And and he said, I just think it's more important for my kids to learn how to read and write and actually, and add and subtract than, you know, which college is going to have a designer beer like, like Jack went to. <laughs> Otter <laughs> Creek is actually named after me. There you go. So, I mean, I think that a lot of this is sort of interesting. What about the idea, Dan, that, um, you know, we really don't teach our kids anything about money in the school systems. How can we change that? Well, first of all, we... We don't. Uh, there's something like only three states uh, that have any kind of a requirement for uh, personal finance courses uh, in high school and throughout the school years. Uh, three, three states. Ridiculous. Uh, uh, it's crazy. And, and I mean, there, there are electives, uh, but kids don't take them. Um, you know, financial education takes place at home. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it's school of hard knocks and it's at home. You don't get it. You don't get it in high school. You don't really even get it in college. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of grassroots movements out there to change that now. Uh, uh, financial literacy movements are all over the place, but I'm not sure any of them are really taking hold. This uh, is a one, I'm sorry to interrupt, Dan, that this is called Jumpstart, which uh, I'm not sure you're familiar with, but this is actually kind of a cool thing because um, this is a nonprofit organization whose mission is literally personal financial literacy, and what they try to do is go into various school districts, district by district, and try to get financial coursework included in the curriculum. And what I, I got involved in, in helping them out when they were doing some stuff um, in Rhode Island, where my former firm was, and I found it to be amazing. The amount of pushback we got from unions was mm. intense. Like, yeah, really? We're not teaching an extra class, so that ain't happening. This is just, it's frightening to me, actually, that, that we are... Why, it, it's, it, it also makes me so angry because I really do believe the more we can bring it in at the younger age, the better off we're all going to be. Right. And you mentioned Jumpstart, which is a tremendous organization. Uh, they do a financial literacy test every two years, and they've done this for the last 10 or 12 years. And, the most, and in the most recent test, the high school kids that they tested have fared the worst. So, so finan uh, financial literacy scores are going down. Oh, my God. It's going down among high school kids just as we're entering this world or they're entering this world where they need to be more and more responsible mm. because the safety nets are going. Sure, we're so much more responsible for our futures. And, um, and Dan, tell us that the answer lies in one simple <laughs> activity. And I believe we know, Jack, it is? <laughs> I, I want to hear. I can't wait to hear. Poker. Okay. Of course. Poker. Of course. Tell us about why uh, <laughs> poker is the key to success. Because it's a really fun game. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of inherent life lessons and money lessons in, in playing poker, from risk management to money management, uh, especially in kids. It works on your memory. Um, uh, you learn uh, statistical analysis. It's a lot of math involved. And all this, it's not just me saying this, it's, it's all been proven uh, that there are these benefits. And, and so if you get in this poker game, if your kids play and, 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 they're, and they're into it and they actually try to play it the way it's supposed to be played, uh, they, they absorb all these lessons without even knowing it. It's so cool. And then uh, a couple things I loved about that column. I mean, one, for one thing, as we know, the, um, a lot of investment managers are so into poker. I mean, that's a huge thing among them. And I don't think it is a coincidence that a lot of these brilliant mathematical minds who also happen to be billionaires play the game of poker. Uh, but also you pointed out that when your kids are teenagers, the number of activities you can do together goes down a little bit. You know, my son could play cars with me uh, <laughs> until he fell asleep on the floor. I'm guessing that Lexi isn't really interested in that. But maybe she plays poker with you, and that's fun. Yeah, actually, uh, she doesn't so much, but my youngest one does, uh, Danielle. Uh, she actually came in second place in a in a tournament that we had uh, Woo! Uh, at, at, in Vegas. <laughs> no, well, it was a swim club, uh, <laughs> beach club kind of small thing. And Dan's like pimping out his daughter to play poker now. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, she's here comes the ringer. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's probably thirty people entered, and she took second place, <laughs> and she was fourteen at the time, and um, she's kind of intuitive with her, and she's she she gets it. She knows that if, you know a pair of jacks is a pretty good hand, and. Uh, you know, meanwhile, all these, without her even knowing it, though, all these probabilities are running through her mind, and she doesn't even realize that's happening. Uh, but if, if I've got jacks, let's see, if somebody doesn't have a pair, I'm probably better than, you know, all, all, all this 
thinking and, and risk assessment. Uh, you know, should I go all in? Uh, should I hold back some chips? Well, those are really good life lessons. Uh, you know, save your money for the best opportunities. That's great. I, I love that because uh, when I went on, this is the truth, I remember I was going for a job interview at O'Connor & Associates, which was a big options trading firm out of Chicago, and we got down to like the third or fourth round of interviewing, and they put 10 of us in a room around a craps table <laughs> and watch us play craps and to see who how people use their understanding of statistics and probability to play craps. I didn't get the job, I just want to say, but <laughs> I did I did have, I did make money, but it was great. No, but it was a it was a great lesson in using certain kinds of activities to keep your mind sharp and really that there is a skill set and an under and, and a risk taking um, yeah. apprehension versus I think what they were looking at, they wanted to see someone who would really roll and take huge risk mm. and I'm way too much of a wimp. So it was probably right. They but didn't but hire there's me. a there's a uh, a Harvard a Harvard uh, law professor or it's at Harvard where there's a movement to uh, to teach math and life and money through poker. They want to they want to play poker in the classroom and use it as a money and life. Uh, That's kind of cool. Skill session. That's cool. Yeah. Um, how about darts? Okay, no, I mean, not darts. What game? <laughs> Blackjack, what maybe. You know what? I would say bridge because I like to play bridge. And actually, the options traders that I grew up with, they are. They're all like contract bridge, duplicate bridge, life masters. And remember that Jimmy Kane wasn't he off playing Jimmy, in a bridge yeah. tournament when Brer Stearns was burning down? And we know Buffett and Gates are big bridge players. Yeah. And yeah. Ace Greenberg before Jimmy Kane. Uh, right. You know, that, it was, Bear Stearns was a big uh, bridge house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it actually has been said, and I don't want to cast any aspersions on poker, but some people have argued that the financial world ought to be more bridge playing and less poker playing oh, um, and I like thinking that. longer term and cooperating together. Well, now this is a great philosophical place to end because uh, this, you know, let us know what you think. Just shoot us an email. Ask the experts at moneywatch.com. What game should we model our <laughs> financial lives on? Should it be poker? Should it be bridge? Should it be craps? Perhaps Parcheesi? War? Perhaps. <laughs> I don't know what else. Long Gin shot. rummy? Yeah. Get off the schneid? Uh, Dan, will you come back and play with us again? Anytime. I want this a new picture up there, though. I really do. I'm going to bring a new picture. I'm going to Photoshop a picture of you <laughs> and bring it up next time. It's going to be fabulous. Jack, I don't really have a picture of you to do this. On. Oh, yes. Yeah, sure, oh, wait. Yes, yeah, I do. Is, yeah. Hold yeah. on a second. We'll have to do that. Um, and in the meantime, um, if if Dan comes back, we got to have, maybe we should have people come on with their kids. And Dan could be like the shrink who like <laughs> negotiates between them. Because that would be a good thing to do, how, right? How much allowance? Well, your six-year-old would probably want, eh, what, t twice what you're willing to pay, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that would be kind of No, she cool. doesn't understand what she, it yeah. buys yet, so yeah. we're I, okay. I think that's kind of totally cool. Anyway, um, this has been Ask the Experts here at Money Watch. Shoot us an email. A and again, throughout the week, it doesn't matter. Ask the experts at moneywatch.com. I am Jill Schlesinger. I'm Jack Otter. And we want to thank Dan Cadlick, newest Money Watch blogger, Bank of Dad. So happy to be here. It's so great to have you. Mm. Thanks again for joining us, and thanks for watching. On the subject, kids, you can talk and talk to your faces glow. <laughs> Cute. Kids, but they still do just what they want to do.